everybody this is Katisha from Kitty Crow Creations and welcome back to another tutorial we haven't seen you in a while so I'm very glad that you're able to tune in today today once again I have uh, my niece Octavia who is in charge of the camera and the microphone Octavia say hi Octavia hi guys <laughs> okay you guys are so fortunate because I am beginning a dog series and I am very grateful that my a very best friend of so many years we've been friends since we were freshmen in high school she is giving me an opportunity to start off my dog series with a portrait of her dog so what we're doing today is that we are actually painting on a 16 by 20 canvas of her beautiful dogs um, Buddy and Chloe and these are beautiful pit bulls, I believe. And um, I'm very fortunate that we get to paint them. So that's something we're gonna be doing today. So this is the first painting of our dog series. Um, if you have not had a chance to subscribe, please feel free to hit that um, subscription button and the notification button so that way you'll be aware of future art tutorials and especially now since we're going to be covering a dog series that, that I think you would really 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 like I hope that you remember to subscribe let me go ahead and talk about my materials um, like I said we're working on a 16 by 20 canvas uh, we have been working on a 11 by 14 so I'm glad we were able to up the size a little bit and work on a 16 by 24 and as far as my brushes what I'm using for my brushes today I'm using my one inch Simply Simmons, which um, is a bright brush. Um, so the br a bright brush has like a shorter, um, it, it's a little bit shorter than a regular flat brush. I'm also using a number eight uh, flat brush. I'm using a number, I think it's number six. It's a number six flat brush. I'm using a number six round brush and I'm using a liner brush additionally I have a number two angle brush from Simply Simmons that I might be using and then a uh, palette knife to mix our colors that's what I have for my brushes we are also going to be using a sponge brush just for the background of the uh, canvas you want to have some painters tape to to help you out when you're transferring on the image sandpaper to sand the canvas which we're going to do in a minute and I will go over the colors as I'm painting uh, so the colors we're going to go ahead and get started with are to do the background so before before I do that, let me talk about what's going to happen this particular uh, lesson as we move forward and we do our dog lessons they might become a little bit um, intricate but it's something that anybody can do if you just follow the steps and take your time we are going to paint the background first then we're going to blow dry it then we're going to paint one dog we're going to paint buddy first we're going to paint buddy he's a brown dog and after we paint buddy we're going to paint chloe so but anyway so our first set of colors to do the background i have phthalo green i have yellow ochre i have titanium white I also have Mars Black and I have Burnt Umber and I didn't mention the um, this before this is something that we haven't used before this is golden acrylic glazing liquid and what I'm doing with this is that this is going to help add the um, it's going to help add the color to the um, the glossiness to the eyes when we do the eyes of the of, of, of Chloe so I'll talk more about that when we start using it okay so let's go ahead and get started with the with the background I'm gonna wet my brush a little bit okay so I'm gonna take okay and I want you to watch the motion because what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be painting inwards and as I paint inward the color gets brighter and brighter and brighter. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix some phthalo green. And with that, I'm gonna mix, I think I'm gonna mix some burnt, um, let's try burnt umber. I just wanna darken it up. I think that burnt umber is gonna give us a dark color that I'm looking for. 
Let's see. So dark. Yeah, that works. So I'm just going to be brushing in. And as I can see already, that's not enough paint. So we're on a 16 by 20, so you're going to use a lot of paint. Or you can even wet the canvas. So I'm brushing inward, and as I brush inward, I will get lighter. I'll put a little water on that so it can actually... There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of... It's just a little bit of Mars Black over in that corner because I still want it darker. So I put a little bit of Mars Black in the corner over here. Going back to my, the rest of my other green. Gonna get some more. I got some more Thalo Green and some uh, Burn Umber and I'm gonna mix it. Like I said, I'm gonna put a little bit more water in there, make it stretch. What you can also do to help the paint adhere to your canvas is that you can spritz it with a spritzer bottle of water. And as I always say, paint your sides. I'm not painting my sides right now because I'm always, like I said, I'm always on a time limit. I'm trying to make sure I stay within my time limit of two hours or under two hours. But we'll see how that goes tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna get some more paint and I will tell you, like I'm always saying, you're gonna have to put some paint on the canvas. And if you're one of those people who are very conservative with your materials, which who wouldn't be, you are gonna have to loosen up a little bit and use some paint. That's, that's what you're gonna have to do. And for this background, as we, as we go along in this lesson in regard to the backgrounds, you don't have to use the background that I'm using. You can use whatever background you want. But I chose this because I actually did some, um, I played around with some different colors of the background. And I just thought that this really, really, really made the, um, I'm mixing the thalo green and the burn umber again. I really felt like it really made this uh, picture pop a little bit. I thought it was kind of awesome. Okay, so, and the reason why I'm doing it inwards is because I want it to be a gradual progression moving inwards because as we get closer and closer inward, it's going to get, I'm going to get a little bit of Mars Black for that corner. It's going to get um, lighter and lighter. I just want the corners of my painting to be darker. So let me get some more of that, get some water because that doesn't want to go on there. I love dogs. I think, you know, my sisters have uh, two Queenslands and they're, they're so cute and they're so loving. I just love dogs. Don't you love dogs, Tavia? Love them. They're so loyal. Little friendly buddy. Yeah, little friendly buddies. And the thing about dogs is that they're like family. So, and they have awesome personalities. They're each, they're each have their own individual amazing personality. So what I'm doing, I'm just going through and trying to really quickly put this, um, this dark green in here and, like, and then when I come back, we're gonna add some yellow ochre to it. And there's different special, when you were doing this, I guess you would call this painting like a, a, dog, a dog portrait because that's really what I was kind of um, aiming for was to have a dog portrait. And just trying to get the character of the dog. And when you paint portraits, you want, you want to create a background where it will make your, your, um, your characters in your painting which in this case are, are the dogs, Chloe and uh, Buddy, is you want to do it so you can really catch all their details.
Gonna get a little bit of that Mars black to put in the corner. And that's why I'm using this this um, this bright one inch bright brush is to cover more more of the um, the canvas as, as much as I can. And in a minute, I'm going to transition to a a lighter color. Just a moment. Get some more of that green. And if you need to find, um, I put the the traceable and the reference photo on um, my Pinterest page, and pretty soon I'll have a website that will have all that information. It'll be you'll have easier access to all of this. And I know a lot of you're probably pondering how can I get my image bigger. So I will probably be posting real soon, maybe with sometime this week, a photo. I mean, I'm sorry, not a photo. I'm thinking of photos right now a um, uh, video on how to enlarge your your um, reference photo or your traceable to match the size of your canvas like say for instance you're doing that you're doing this portrait of these dogs and you want it to be on an 18 by 24 or a 30 I think there's 30 inches by 48 inches I could be off on my measurements but something to that extent that's that really that's really that big Put some Morris black. And to make this go on faster, like I said, you, you um, could have spritzed it with some water, that, the actual canvas. I would have done the same, but the spritzer bottle I have, it's, it's I don't think it's the, it's not the, the right one that I want to use. It squirts out too, too much water, and you, I don't want to saturate I don't want to saturate my canvas. So you see me going in a very unusual um, motion and a very unusual, unusual pattern as my, well, you know, my, my brush strokes. And you don't have to do this, you do yours this way, but that's the way I chose to do mine because that's the way I want it. And remember we talk about as artists, you can do what you want because it's your artwork. What is the most unusual dog? What is the most unusual dog to you? I don't know. I, I just I don't know about. It. I think Chinese Sharpe dogs. I think that's what they're called. Chinese Sharpes. I think that's what they're called. Tavia, right? Well, they have to be unusual if I haven't heard of it. <laughs> that's a good one. See, she confirmed it. She confirmed it. Thank you to Octavia. It is unusual. She confirmed that it is. Okay, so I got all that on there. Okay, now while that's still wet, I'm not gonna dry it. I'm gonna come in here and get some of my yellow ochre. And I'm gonna brush that in here, like that. And it blends really well. While, while it's wet because your goal is that you want that brightness right in the middle right here so that way the dogs will be the focal point still going in my same motion And we're going to come back and put little little splatters of yellow ochre anyway, but I want the dogs, like I said, to be the starlight of the show. And so I want this yellow ochre to really stand out in the middle for the dogs. <clears throat> Thank you. 
I just thought that was so, I just thought this was so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more in the middle and then we'll call it good and we'll put our little splatter on here. I'm gonna put a little more. And I'm trying to hurry up before it gets completely sticky and tacky because when, you, when it does that, that means that it's at a stage where it's starting to dry and all you're really doing is, I feel like lifting up the paint that you already have down there and we don't wanna do that. Okay. Okay, so, gonna clean out my brush because I won't be needing that anymore. And then I'm gonna dry it off. And you, if, you, if you've watched my videos, you know that I'm not putting my paint on my clothes. I'm just, I have towels here that I, that I use to clean out my brush. Okay, so we're gonna take just a little sponge. You can get a pack of these sponges at Michael's or even I think uh, perhaps Hobby Lobby. I bought mine at Michael's, like a pack for like $6. I think it comes with four or five. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go into my yellow ochre, get some of that paint and pat some of it off. Because I don't want a whole bunch on there and I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna splatter it. I really love that splatter effect. And I'm, I'm barely tapping it. Let me take some more of it off of there because it's leaving a, there we go. Just to give a splatter effect. You could have also splattered it, but I just thought this looks so much better. I'm just going through and just kind of blending it in there. You notice I haven't really put any more on here yet, but I will in a second. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna put some down there. I'm gonna take some that I already have here, pat it out, and you'll see how, I'm, well, you know, we probably need to get some more. But let me make sure I have it all off of there. So I don't want a whole bunch. This is fairly lightly. And I'm putting it everywhere because I wanted to have that splatter effect. You don't have to do this if you think, and it almost looks like it kind of has like a grassy feeling in the background. And that, that's, I think that's kind of cool. It's however you want to do it. I'm going to get some more. One of my movies that I love, I love to watch, and I'm always talking about old classic movies because as you know, with me, I love old classic movies. And I was thinking about the animation, The Lady and the Tramp. That was a good one. And Disney has always produced good quality movies. And you know, it had dogs. I just love. Or even uh, 101 uh, Dalmatians. That has some very good animation of dogs. Okay, see how the, I, I gotta cool it and back off a little bit because some of that painting's coming. Okay, there we go. We got our splatter. Okay, I'm gonna blow dry this and um, I think you should blow dry it too and then we're gonna do, we're gonna transfer on our pattern. Okay, so here I go, I'm gonna blow dry it.
that should be dry enough. And I forgot to tell you, when you're a acrylic painting, it's always nice to have a blow dryer handy because acrylic paints really fast and you can speed up the process by blow drying it. So I've done the background. So now I'm going to transfer on my, um, I'm gonna transfer on my, my actual pattern, my image. So let's talk about that for a second. Okay. So I have this big image and I'll, I'll do a lesson maybe like in, you know, in a month or so or, or, or maybe um, a week or so to show you how to grid your, um, your reference photo and how to grid it where you can like take it and, and put the grid onto a canvas and make it bigger. But what I did, I took the photo, here's, here's a reference photo by the way. And I did a, I, I did a couple of scenarios. I, this is Buddy and this is Chloe. And then I went in and I tried to um, crop it on my, on my software, on my computer to try to figure out what kind of background I wanted because I wanted it to be a portrait and I didn't want all the busyness of this in the background. So I felt like this color looked really well with them and they kind of stood out really well with, with this. But here's the original reference photo. And then when I made it turn it into a traceable, the, the, the printout does not come out this large. So I had to go to an online program. It's free. It's called um, Rosterbator. And I can put that into I can put that in the description. And you put any picture you want, you download it, and then you tell it what size you want. And what it does, it changes the size for you and increases it or it decreases it. And then you print it out. As you can see, I had to tape it a little bit, but it, I wanted a 16 by 20 and this is what it gave me. So it's just a really neat program. I learned this from um, Ginger um, Cook. I don't know if you've ever seen Ginger Cook on uh, YouTube. She's like an inspiration for me. I learned a lot from her, but you can find it. Um, that's where I got the information from. Okay, so now I'm going to trace it on. And this is where it gets kind of tricky. So I'm going to put that down there. Make sure it's straight. I'm trying to put it where it's kind of off-center because when you're doing art, you don't want to try to put things right in the center of the canvas. You want to put it off a little bit to this, as much to the side as you can. And that's... Um, trying to that that's you trying to follow the rule of thirds the rule of thirds says that your paintings or your drawings are more appealing when they're on the third mark or off centered on the third okay so what i'm using i'm getting ready to transfer on the image and what i'm using is i'm using my usual sorel um, transfer paper you can get this at amazon and i'm going to transfer it on with white so before i do that i want to tape my dogs down. I want to make sure that they're they're centered on here properly because right now they look kind of crooked. So, and I could have prepared this before um, I showed you the lesson, but I want you I want you to see step by step what I'm doing. And I know when I used to be a beginning um, artist, um. And I forgot to tell you, okay, when I used to be getting a, a beginning artist, I wanted to know step by step what is the teacher doing. So I'm trying to, you know, be as um, methodical as I can and showing you the step by step process. Before I put on my color, before I did any of this, I forgot to tell you that I sanded the canvas first. So that's one thing you want to do is sand it first, not too, with this real fine sandpaper. And you don't want to do it too hard because you could puncture a hole into your canvas. but. You can use sandpaper and that's what I did. So now I'm gonna tape this down and then I'm going to transfer it on. We're gonna transfer it on to the best of our ability. So Octavia, if you have to paint a dog, if you're interested in painting a dog, my niece Octavia is a very, very talented artist herself. But if you had to paint a dog, which one would you be interested in? What would be your choice? Oh. Mm. That is a great question. It would help if I had the microphone on. <laughs> um, I'm going to repeat what I just said since I had my microphone off. Uh, what I just said is that this image I took and I downloaded it onto Rosterbader and I enlarged it so it would fit my 16 by 20 canvas. 
And so what I'm doing right now is that I am um, getting ready to transfer on the image using my Sorrel transfer paper. And I'm using white. And I was asking my niece Octavia if she would, uh, she was wanted to paint a dog, which one would she want to paint? Which one would you want to paint, Octavia? I think I would paint a husky. Oh, that would be a good choice. So adorable. Huskies are beautiful dogs. They really are. And especially their, the, their, their fluffiness of their fur and their eyes. Oh my goodness, I love beautiful. their eyes. Their eyes are beautiful. Okay. So I'm using white transfer paper. Let's see if I put it on right or if I put it on backwards. That's the tricky part. Let me test it first. I just use a use a pin. I'm going to test it, see if it's, yep, that's perfect. And here we go. And try to get as much detail on there as you, as you can. But not all the detail, just get the outline, like the major parts. Like I would definitely want this part so I can know that the, I need to do some, um, this little parameter here is the, the, um, the part by the nose. But especially, make sure you get the eyes. So I'm making sure I get my eyes because I don't want to mess up on those. In the nose, I'm going to make adjustments to it later anyway, but I just want to get a feel of where it is. In the nostrils, I'm probably going to change those too. And I don't really need this part right here, but I definitely want this part. And this is just the cheekbone, but you don't really have to put that. Okay, um, I'm not going to put this part right here of the... Of the um, of the dog collar. I'm just doing this part. So this is the part I'm going to outline because that's all I'm doing. Get that ear. And I don't think I got that part. But you know what I found interesting about painting a pit bull? And I'm pretty sure these are pit bulls. I'm not a, I'm not a dog expert. But I'm pretty sure this is a pit bull. Um, they don't really have, if, I, you know, going, going into this project, you have to think of them almost like painting someone with skin because their fur is, they really almost don't have fur. It's, like, it's kind of like skin. And that's the mindset you have to have when you're going in and painting because you're trying to figure out how to paint fur. It's not really fur in a sense. It's more like skin. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we got Buddy done here. Okay, I'm gonna move it over. Let's see what we got so far. Okay, that's pretty good. So I will continue right here. I promise you, if you can be a little patient, I will give you an art lesson on how to draw. But if you're here just to learn how to paint, which that's the whole point of this lesson is to learn how to paint, then that's great. I'm not going to worry about that at the bottom. Let me just go get the rest of this. Now, um, this lesson will more than likely it'll probably be a, a part one and a part two and reason being is that I don't want to have you sit for two, two and three hours trying to paint two dogs so what we might do is we might just paint one dog and then um, have for part two so part one we'll we'll paint Buddy and part two we'll paint Chloe I like that name Chloe Dana my friend those are really nice names that you've given your dogs Chloe and Buddy. Those are cute. 
I think it's actually Deanna and her, hu her husband came up with that name. They're really cute names. I know this is tedious, but just hang in there. If you get all the small, uh, tedious things out the way, it, it makes it easier for you to f um, have a real nice finished uh, painting project, I assure you. But Chloe's eyes are really beautiful. See in the picture right here? See in this one here? And we'll talk about how to make her eyes look real glossy, but they're, she's got beautiful eyes and beautiful fur. And Buddy's gorgeous too, but Chloe just really stands out. Just trying to keep track of where I am. But like I said, this is the, this is the uh, first of, of some, a uh, couple of dogs that I'm gonna be painting. And I will keep you updated on that. Now, please don't get discouraged um, when you're trying to do a painting, uh, a painting like this one. You just have to go in steps, and we're going to talk about how to determine what, what colors you should use when you're painting dog portraits. I'm just going to, I'm not going to go into much detail with that because I'm going to go back and change it anyway. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Okay, I'm going to move it up like this. And now one of the most important parts like I, on Chloe, like I had on um, Buddy, was make sure you get those eyes precise. I don't even know if I want to, yeah, I'll just go ahead and trace it. I was going to say, I don't even know if I want to trace that, but. And it's just like an outline to help you understand what you're painting when you start painting, when you start looking at the reference photo. Okay, the ears. I'm not even going to worry about that inside because I'm going to change that anyway. Make sure we got that. All right, I think we got everything. Let's take a look. Yeah, we're good to go. Yay, we got our Wonderful dogs transferred on. So now we can get down to business and have some fun painting. But aren't you all excited to be painting on a 16 by 20? Tave, if you were to paint a painting, what would you want to paint it on a 16 by 20, 18 by 24, or what, I mean, a, an eight by 10? Mm -hmm. What is your preference? Honestly, it just depends on what type of painting and how important it is. That's but I say the bigger, the better. The bigger, the better. Yes. And I would like for us one day all to be able to paint a big canvas on like a, a 48 inch canvas. That's some, I think the largest I've painted so far has been a 24 by 24, but I'm always trying to challenge myself. So I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll do a three foot by four foot. So basically a 36 by 48 um, inch painting. Okay, so we're done with all of that. So I'm gonna put it over here. Okay, so we're gonna start with Buddy. So the first thing we're gonna do with Buddy is that we are gonna go in here and, let me turn that around, I'm sorry. We're gonna go in here and paint his eyes black. And I'm gonna start that with this, this um, number six round brush. So we're gonna start off by, I'm just gonna wet my paint brush a little bit. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna start painting his eyes. 
And the only reason I'm doing that is so I can keep track of where they are because the eyes are one of the most important parts of the um, painting. And if you're painting a dog, if someone wants you to uh, do a dog portrait, make sure that you see if you can get a, um, a reference photo that has a lot of detail where you can really see the eyes, you can really see the nose. So make sure if you can do that. If you see me time to time uh, looking over there, I'm looking at my reference photo. And, you know, people, there's a, there's a debate out there that's going on among artists and art teachers and students that, oh, it's cheating if you use a, a you know, traceable or if you're looking, why are you looking at a reference when you should be painting from life or painting from your, not so much from life, but from your imagination. Well, Ginger Cook, she made this statement. I think, I think it was Ginger Cook. I've learned so much from her. She was saying how a lot of times you need to look at reference photos to figure out the way things are supposed to be. Um, if you don't know how hands should be, if you have a reference photo there, that can really help you figure out what, what things are supposed to be. Okay, so we have Buddy's, we have Buddy's eyes, and I'm gonna uh, work on his nose right now. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm sorry, by the way, that was Mars Black that I put on his eyes. Now I'm gonna take a little Mars Black and I'm going to add a little white to it because when I do his nose, I don't wanna start with the darkest color first. I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit with titanium white. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and his nose kinda comes I kind of like at an angle. That's the way it looks to me. Pull a bit more black in there. It's a little bit too light. I'm going to put a little bit more black. I just don't want it too black because his nostrils are black and if we make everything black, you won't, too black, you won't be able to see his nostrils. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to come and get a little white. And I'm going to kind of... I want to kind of draw a little line here and then just how to brush it in. If you watched my one dog series that I did with the little dog holding the rose, I'm trying to do that so I can establish some kind of uh, three dimensional dimension, uh, dimension of the nose. That's why I'm doing that. Put a little bit up here. Wipe some of that paint off my brush, blend it in. Okay, blend the rest of that in too. And it gives us nose some um, some depth. I'm gonna blend it in so you can see that hard line. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and put his nostrils. His nostrils kind of come like this. One goes that way. And one kind of comes this way. I 
to outline that a little bit up here. Then I might come back and put a little white up there again to, to give it some more dimension. But I'm just trying to give it some shape. Okay. Um, and then he kind of has this coming down like this. But we're probably gonna we're gonna I'm gonna have to go back over top of that anyway because we're gonna put the white around his nose. But to make the nostrils really stand out, I'm gonna put some more white in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of white, not too much. Just put a little bit at the top up here. Let's make his nostrils stand out. Blend them in. I'm always, you notice I'm always like trying to blend things in where it doesn't look like you can see it, but you can barely see it. Okay, you see that? So now you can see he has dimension in his nose and more than likely I'm gonna come back later and even put more white. So right now what we're gonna do is that we are going to get some burnt sienna oh and by the way um now i can talk some more about my colors i've used um we used phthalo green for the background and we used yellow ochre titanium white and the mars black and the burnt umber and now i'm getting ready to introduce some burnt sienna Okay, and we also use yellow ochre on the back of the. So I'm gonna put out my burnt sienna. And I'm using, what I'm using is I'm using a, a uh, it's called, it's by um, Strathmore, it's, a, it's palette paper. And I have this big palette, this big palette paper. I love it because when you're done with your paints, you can just toss, toss the palette paper. And sometimes what I'll do, um, if I can find a big enough container like for this one, I'll put it in a container and, and um, like with a top to it and seal it up and, and it usually keeps the paint in good shape for at least a couple of days and that's really nice. All right, so and now so I got so I took out some burnt umber and I'm also going to take out some unbleached titanium. And I already have some yellow ochre out. So I'm moving away from my round brush and now I'm going to start uh, utilizing my, this is my uh, number, number two flat brush so I can cover more surface. Okay, we're going to go in and start painting this part of his head. We're going to start with some burnt, burnt umber. And for the burnt umber, I'm going to, you know, I'm, let me take out some dioxazine purple because I want it a little bit darker. A lot of times to, to make my, my um, burnt umber darker, I'll use some dioxazine purple. I could mix some black with it, but black, I don't know, it really, really, it really dulls the color. So that's why I'm going to use, um, Doxazine purple. So I'm gonna put some doxazine purple in there, and I don't know if you can see. You can see how I made it really a little bit darker. Put a little bit more. Okay. Uh, before I put that on, I want to say I want to say a couple of things. Okay. As I stated, this is my re reference photo. This this was the main reference photo, and this is me through editing. What, what my what my software my interpretation of how I wanted things to be so I made my own adjustments I made my own background to try to see what it is that I wanted to produce for for the final result of this painting but when you look at either the actual reference photo or even the one that I have here you need to spend some time looking closely at the picture and see what your colors are like what is your darkest color what is your lightest color and you're going to have to paint layers on top of layers 
like I knew that this the darkest color underneath his skin was was the burnt umber with some dioxazine purple and then we have some burnt sand in here we have some um, some unbleached titanium and potentially there's also some um, some um, some some yellow ochre but I, I just want you to pay attention to that as we're painting and there's, and there's a little bit of blue in his fur so I'm just letting you know that as we continue with their painting so and that's why I'm trying to make the, this part dark so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in I'm going to make some more you need lots of paint The more paint, I'm going to put some more doxazine purple on that because his, his undertone is really, really dark. I'm trying to stay away from those eyes for right now. And this is his collar, so we'll come back to that later. So anyway, like I said, um, dogs have diff you know different aspects of their their fur, and this particular these particular dogs, I really felt like I was actually working with skin tones because they didn't really have very much fur. So. And as I'm always telling you when you're painting, if you have to, do things in sections so you don't become overwhelmed. And acrylic dries really fast, so you really gotta get in there and start painting as fast as you can. If you don't want to be rushed with painting as fast as you can before your paint you know, dries out, go ahead and um, get some blending medium and that extends the the time of the paint okay so now that the, while the paint's wet I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna start adding some of the um, some of the unbleached titanium in the little parts that are I might have to let it dry but I don't know if I like that purplish looking color so we're gonna have to I might let it dry and come back and dry brush it on there because we don't I put the purple and the um, I'm drying my brush I mean I rinsed out my brush I put the purple in the brown to make it darker but when you add the white to it you can see the purple so we're just gonna let that dry for a little bit and then um, we'll come back and put the light color later I'm gonna add some more mixture of the dioxazine purple and the burnt umber and finish putting in the rest of the the skin and so remember if you have questions put them in the comments section or even I I believe I have my email on there you can you know contact me with some questions well anyway if you put the comments it'll it'll email me too but if you have questions about certain uh, aspects of this painting feel free to put them in the comment section and I'll, I'll address them as quickly as I can so after I do this part I will as you can see it takes up a lot of paint let me get some more um, burn umber I'm just gonna finish painting that up as I said this painting is gonna be in parts so I'm gonna finish painting up his skin and then we're gonna transition into the next part of our lesson so let me get the skin on there or rather the under the underpainting
but when you're painting uh, I, I'm always saying you've got to be a problem solver because you're trying to figure out what are the colors that I see and I, I know I, I and I'm probably gonna bring this up in every in every uh, every lesson or every tutorial that we do in order to be a, a, a good painter and this is something I've learned and I'm still learning you have got to sit there and analyze the painting and ask yourself what am I looking at what do I see what are the colors Okay, I'm gonna put some over here and then we'll get that, we'll get the inside of that fur later. Okay, that is part one of the Buddy and Chloe, that's what I wanna call, I wanna call it Buddy and Chloe. Um, um, art tutorial because it's really about these two the wonderful pit bulls and um, I thank you for tuning in and I will see you for part two thank you and remember to hit the subscribe button the notification button thank you for tuning in